chemical to disperse powders relochi modifier so we will have a detailed discussion today on key process challenges involving such powders for food and the personal care industry and how to address them and also uh, some of our guests today are from uh, pharma and other industry we have similar powders like gum thickener hpmc cmc etc are regularly being used in various processes so it will be equally helpful for uh, them too so just a brief introduction about me um, my name is daljit singh i am working as a sales leader for idex mpt india business and responsible for quadro liquids and microfluidics business for india and southeast asia i'm based at idex mumbai office and uh, work very closely with the back to chem team uh, to support our customers on quadro liquid products and services and uh, as you know uh, back to chem is our front end team and they are our authorized uh, channel partner for quadro liquids uh, in india so from back to chem team today we have uh, mr uh, sagar bagal uh, mr prashant vartak and other colleague on this call and uh, they are joining with me in welcoming uh, all our guests uh, in the today's webinar so thank you very much for your time and we really appreciate that uh, so let me uh, briefly introduce you to our today's speaker mr uh, wayne harwood so wayne is a national sales manager for quadro liquid and based at our uh, waterloo canada facility he has a rich and hands on experience working on different high shear mixing application and today he is going to speak uh, on dispersion challenges of uh, tough powder and uh, efficient way of uh, handling it so i will hand it over to wayne um, uh, just a few second uh, but uh, few uh, housekeeping things uh, before that so i request all of our our uh, guests to please uh, keep their microphone muted and if you have any question during the webinar uh, please submit it in the chat window we will ensure to answer it or you can also unmute yourself and ask the question uh, we have kept 10 minute for question and answer session at the end however please feel free to uh, ask your question any time during the webinar and uh, make it more uh, interactive and uh, lastly uh, i did just to inform uh, that this uh, webinar session is uh, being uh, recorded and we will also uh, make uh, the recording of this uh, webinar available to our uh, guest post uh, webinar so uh, thank you very much and really appreciate your cooperation so with this uh, i will hand it over to mr wayne harwood uh, for uh, for the discussion of today Wayne, over to you. Great, thank you, Delji. Uh, I appreciate that, and I appreciate everyone taking the time to join us today. Uh, looking forward to a good discussion, uh, as Delji mentioned, on on some difficult to disperse powder, and uh, some some of the methods and challenges that we can help you apply in terms of uh, working with these products. So first, uh, a little bit of a an agenda. What we're going to touch on. We'll do a little bit of a, a background on who we are. Um, both uh, IDEX, Quadro, and then uh, the three main sales folks that uh, you have as support for the Quadro Liquids product line. Uh, then we'll touch on a high level introduction to the ZC. Uh, following that, we're going to delve into five different areas uh, where the ZC technology can really help um, make some improvements in, in your process or, or help you along the way. So starting off, uh, IDEX, basically we're uh, a Chicago-based um, company uh, traded on the New York Stock Exchange with, with many employees globally. Uh, I'm not quite sure the 6,700 is the most up-to-date number. We're, we're constantly growing and, and I believe uh, that that continues to, to change. Uh, but there's quite a wide variety of businesses within the, the IDEX uh, brand. 
uh, things in the fluid and metering group. There's there's a separate health and science technologies group. So right now we're playing a, a huge part in trying to come up with different testing methods around COVID and different vaccine productions and different treatments as well. So there, there's a lot going on in, in many of these groups. Uh, we also then have a dispensing equipment group, uh, things like paint dispensers you might find at your local hardware store. Um, there's another group for fire safety and other di diversified products. You know, one of the, the greatest examples I like to refer to there is our uh, like the Jaws of Life brand um, that is built within an IDEX company as well. So, you know, really unique and, and um, kind of key technology out there that that's really important for making people's lives better. That's where we like to focus. So IDEX, um, one of the groups that we fit in within IDEX is actually called the Material Process Technologies Group. And, and that's a group that uh, has been around now for about 10 years and deals with a lot of things around how we handle different challenging products um, to help make a, our customers' lives better. Uh, so that involves things much like the disperser we're going to talk about today, but also mills, uh, both wet and dry, and other powder handling technologies as well. Now the wide range, we've got a look here. We've got compactors, dry mills, wet mills, uh, high shear emulsifier and mixers, uh, different screeners and classifiers, and some other material handling technologies. Uh, and then within, um, beyond that, I should say, we have Quadro. So Quadro, as I mentioned, we're one of five businesses uh, within the IDEX MPT group. The businesses you'll see throughout the presentation here are listed along the, the bottom of the presentation. Uh, but, but Quadro itself has been in business for about 44 years now. Um, started back in, in 1976. Uh, we're constantly growing as well. We're, we're up over about 150 employees now and, and we actually have two separate uh, buildings that we um, exist in in the Waterloo area that's constantly changing and growing as well. Uh, we, we have test labs where we can bring customers uh, product on site to really demonstrate how the equipment works um, and really you know we're, we're about trying to make things better for our, our customers and our employees. Uh, and then if we break it down further, so on the, the Quadro liquids processing line, we do a little bit more than just powder dispersion. I know that's where we're going to focus today, um, but we have some other technology here that might be helpful for you guys along the way as well. And where that fits is we've got some in-tank mixing capabilities. Uh, we also have some inline high shear emulsifying abilities as well, uh, and and we work alongside our, our our sister company as well, Microfluidics. When we can't quite get there with our inline technologies, uh, they have the capabilities to go much finer with it with an emulsion or a high shear wet milling application as well. So uh, there's lots that we can help you with, and again, we're going to focus in on the powder dispersion technology this morning, this afternoon, I should say, for for most folks. Uh, so, Deljit mentioned a little bit about himself already. Um, I should say Deljit's been with us for, for about 10 years now, a little over 10 years. Um, he and I started uh, back in our test lab um, early 2010, and, and we're fortunate to have him back in the fold helping us out for the Quadro Liquids equipment line once more. Uh, we then also have Kyle Everson, who's our application sales manager. And Kyle's been with us now for about three years, and, and he brings a, a wealth of experience and, and just general interest in, in helping make customers' lives better. So learning more about what you guys do and, and just trying to figure out how we can help you best. And then Deljit gave, gave me a little bit of an introduction as well. I'm our national sales manager, mentioned just a moment ago, been, been with Quadro for about 10 years. And uh, through a variety of roles, uh, I'm now working to help uh, customers find their way and find solutions with our equipment. So we'll jump into what the ZC is here. And, and shown here, there's um, 
kind of three typical sizes to the units. There's actually a fourth, much larger unit, which uh, there aren't as many pictures for, but we've got our ZC0, our ZC1, and our ZC3 shown here, just to give you kind of a scale of uh, operation between those three units. So we'll start off, you know, what are rheology modifiers and, and you know, what, what are the challenges we might face when we're, we're dealing with this and why why choose the ZC ultimately? Um, but first off, what, what happens when rheology modifiers get wet? Most of us probably uh, have had that experience and more common, commonly we're gonna refer to what happens as fish eyes or agglomerations. And, and you really need to attack those materials um, in order to break them up. So. What we're going to do with the ZC is focus on never making those problems exist in the first place. Um, so with relative to a conventional in tank uh, mixing application where you have to rely on if you're using something high shear in the tank, you actually have to rely on those materials reaching that high shear zone and that can often be challenging and so what happens when you operate in this method is you get this almost high energy intensity right around the high shear mixing, which makes sense. You've got that high shear blade, that's where you're gonna get and be imparting most of the energy. And then you've got all these areas of low shear around the outside of the tank where you're just kind of bouncing things around and moving things around. So you don't ever get a consistent energy input into the product. And, and what that can lead to is a lot of different challenges, uh, long batch times, um, you're never quite getting all of that material broken down potentially. Uh, you're going to maybe overshear some of the components as well. And, and when we look at in line, we can really narrow that down and apply a constant amount of energy to the product over time. So with the ZC, I mean, these are some of the applications that, you know, over the years we've worked with. Many of these, I mean, we're not limited to, to these by any means, but a lot of these kind of fit the mold of what most of the folks on the line would deal with from, from a day-to-day -day perspective with many personal care products um, and, and also many different food products as well. So some of the different powders we might work with, it, you know, at a high level in the personal care industry, probably the number one um, powder that I would say is still probably dealt with today is, is a carbapol or a carbamer in most cases. Uh, it is one of the most difficult type pro of products to be dispersed. And, and the ZC many, many years ago was actually designed with dispersing carbapol in mind. Uh, so that is something we'll definitely focus on when it comes to difficult to disperse powders and you have all kinds of different gums and other thickeners and you know we're not necessarily just talking about thickeners there's other challenges that we we will we'll touch on a little bit today uh rafting is another potential issue so you get a powder like fume silica that is so very light in bulk density that when you try to put it into a tank it's it's just going to sit on that surface and never quite mix in and so that there's ways that we can help by using the ZC in line to, to do those types of products as well. Uh, the, the photo here gives you a good inside look of what's happening at the point of high shear in the ZC. So as your liquid feeds into the unit, uh, the, dis the disperser would like to actually pump away at a faster rate than you're feeding it. And so what happens in that instance is you're creating a low pressure zone right at the entry here. And so you create vacuum to actually draw the powder down. And when that happens, it gets drawn in. It hits the liquid just above the tooling and then uh, passes through our rotor and stator here and gets sheared effectively in between the, the mesh of teeth. And so that's what's going to drive and eliminate the, the possibility of any of those agglomerations from ever really building and starting. Um, that can help us do a lot of these things, disperse a lot of these powders in a single pass with consistent results every single time. 
what it also does is help us kind of reduce to the point where you're only pulling in the amount of air that comes in with the product. And because it's so efficient, we can also reduce our batch time. And we're going to talk a little bit more about each of these kind of advantages. Um, I'm going to try this animation. I'm not sure if it'll work, but give me one second. So, quick highlight of what's going on on the inside. I mentioned at that liquid as it's passing through, we're creating a liquid ring, basically creating that vacuum, drawing the powder in, and shearing it through the teeth as it passes through. Okay, so as I mentioned, there, there's basically four different models to the ZC series, and those size ranges are going to basically dictate the rate at which the powder can be drawn in and the rate of flow that you would require to make the machine effective for drying in the powder at the, the desired rate. So whenever we're sizing a unit, um, one of the first questions all our experts will, will ask you is, is how quickly do you want to pull the powder in? Because that's the best method for picking the size of the unit. We have plenty of ways we can help you manipulate to, to get the flow rate down into the range needed. But if you have a target on how quickly you need to add your powders, that's where we're going to focus in. So across these four units, our, our ZC0 is generally regarded for pilot scale work. It, uh, it has a few slight differences from the larger models in terms of the powder and liquid interface. And so it really is best for that pilot scale. It creates the same, same type of dispersion, same quality. Uh, it just, it may uh, differ slightly in terms of long-term run potential relative to the, the production scale units, which are generally our ZC1 and our ZC3. Now those units, if we're often kind of talking, the ZC1 is something you often use if you're looking to hand feed the powder into the unit. You know, where we work with, you know, in the 50 to 60 pound per minute range. And if an operator's hand feeding, that's about right. You're doing a little bit about around a bag of powder per minute. Uh, and that is something that that's you know, in the range of, you know, what somebody could keep up with, what an operator could keep up with. Our ZC3, the rates do go up. I mean, and, and these powder rates vary act greatly depending on characteristics of the powder, like your bulk density and, and your flow characteristics. But uh, if we're dealing with two to three bags per minute, more often than not, that's going to be difficult for an operator to keep up with. There's plenty of situations, though, where the ZC3 is still right and an operator will work with it. But uh, more often than not, our ZC3 is, is going to be installed in something underneath like a, a powder unloading station. So a little bit higher capacity. And then the ZC5 is kind of the extreme unit. It, uh, it does some very, very high rates. So we're talking about really high incorporations, really large batches. Uh, if you have interest in that, just let us know and we can, we can see if it's the right fit for you. So before we move uh, further, we have a question over here from Mr. Narayanan. So sure. any any restriction on the medium uh, kind of a liquid to be used for dispersion? Yeah, yeah, um, that's a, a very good question. Well, we will deal a little bit with it further on as well, but I'll answer. I mean, a lot of the tables that we'll see in a lot of performance that we'll talk about is generally for, for a water-like medium. That's going to be your most efficient. But as your liquid uh, medium builds viscosity, we do have ways to, to work with it. So don't be afraid. If, if you can effectively pump the liquid phase, then there is a way to utilize the, the dispersion technology we're going to talk about today. Uh, to effectively disperse a powder into it. Okay, thanks. So, Mr. Narayanan, uh, we hope that answer your question. Uh, in case uh, you have further follow-up question, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Thank you. Thanks. Yavin. 
Uh, okay. uh, yes, yeah. we have another another one over here. Uh, what is the uh, limitation of this uh, mixer related to bulk drugs manufacturing? Um, sorry, to what type of drugs, Delji? Uh, bulk drugs. Uh, so, bulk uh, drugs. Mr. yeah. So, I understand it is uh, related to API. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't say there's there's a true limitation there. I, I would say some of the challenges around APIs often are that they're very, very poor flowing products. Um, you know, commonly, I mean, that's not every every material for sure. but I wouldn't I wouldn't gauge a specific uh, limitation for working with those products. They, there's something we can definitely help you um, add to your liquid phase as well. किसके पर्पस के लिए वैक्यूम पंप है वो नैश का सर नैश का हाँ यस सर सो वही 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 उससे वही उसका ही ब्रांड है यस सर आह अलर्टी अपन ने जटसला में परचेस किया है सर नैश का पंप राइट कैन वी कैन आस्क दैट वी म्यूट अर लाइन या सो या सो आई हैव म्यूटेड मिस्टर संतोष आई थिंक सम अदर कॉल इज गोइंग Thank you. All right. So some of the the different uh, different applications we've come up with of the the dispersion technology over the last few years. Um, we have a, a continuous dispersion setup as well, which allows you to uh, take in a controlled rate. And we're actually going to talk a little bit more about the the setup later on, but. We can put the these units together in kind of full scale systems like you see in the photo here uh, that allow you to uh, manipulate and control concentration of the unit or of the, the discharge from the unit, I should say. And then we also have a tabletop version that we've developed for use on the ZC0, the ZC1 and the ZC3 size units. Uh, gives you a, an ergonomically friendly working height for for your operators to stage uh, your bags uh, and get prepped for the batch. So, we have that as well. um, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into those five areas of uh, potential opportunities for improvement and uh, benefits of the, the dispersion technology. The first one that we'd like to talk about is reducing waste and ingredient losses. So we touched a little bit about this. We saw this slide a little earlier already too, but uh, what happens with these types of materials is, you know, those fish eyes, if you're at into the tank, you might also see it as buildup around the shaft or the outside ring of the, uh, the surface of the liquid. And so dealing with those issues after the fact is often very, very difficult. And sometimes it, it's simply not possible to get those materials into the batch from, from those buildup spots. Or you may end up having to filter out those materials uh, if you really can't deal with them. And, and so that translates to, to ingredient losses that um, is really, it's wasted material and, and it's, it's wasted money at the end of the day. Um, you know, if you're doing this in tank, some of the, the things that might drive that are, are just a light bulk density powder. Um, you might also see that when the, those powders, if they're extremely dusty, uh, bag dumping into a tank can be extremely messy. Uh, many of you folks might know that. Again, you, you could be overshearing those materials, which when you overshear a rheology modifier, what ends up happening is you end up having to use more of the ingredient to build the same viscosity that you would like for your product. So by transitioning to an inline method uh, and only hitting the product with shear as it's hydrating, we can actually significantly reduce any damage to the product. Uh, what that leads to, again, uh, that's going to help you with overall uh, reduction of your costs because you're going to end up needing to use less of those materials in the long run. Uh, you're also going to create more of a consistent batch to batch product quality. And one of the other benefits we, we don't really talk about too much elsewhere in the presentation, but by doing this in line versus some of those in tank methods, it's often a significantly lower energy input that's required 
in order to uh, effectively mix and, and hydrate these materials. There's a couple quick examples here. Um, this was more of a, a personal care um, pharma type product, but what we we're looking at is one of those key key components in the personal care industry being carbapol. And the reason it is such a, an effective component is that it builds so much viscosity, but it's also very, very shear thinning, right? So once the product is made, when the, the customer goes to apply it, when they rub that product on to their skin or um, it, it's going to shear so well that it, it basically dissipates and, and you lose all that viscosity and it rubs nicely. Yeah. Um, but we need to build that viscosity first and it can be very, very challenging. Uh, so one of the ways that we, we help so many customers is with dispersing carbapol. And th this sample here gives us an idea of some of the potential for savings that exist around reducing your ingredient losses. Now, th this particular customer, um, they were able to reduce their waste of, of carbomer by, by 1%. So many of you know, it doesn't take a high concentration of carbapol to, to actually build a desired viscosity. And there, there are many grades of carbapol out there, but uh, with a 1% waste reduction on a process that had about 870 batches per year. This particular customer, the bottom line, they were able to save almost th or over $300,000 in ingredient savings alone just by redu or reducing the amount of time it took to disperse the powder and the overall ingredient savings that they were able to make um, with doing an effective dispersion in the first place using the ZC. Uh, another example, more food related, we, we have a pectin solution uh, that we're doing. This was, was for like a jam type product. And in this case, um, product's a little lower value, but even at that, um, an ingredient savings of five to 10% meant a, a yearly savings of roughly $66,000. So the, the unit itself was justified in, in far less than a year based on strictly ingredient savings alone. And that doesn't even take into account all of the headaches that the, the inline powder dispersion unit can save you in terms of working with these products. So more often than not, just the cost of saving ingredients is enough to justify the, the need for um, an effective inline dispersion. So moving on, we're gonna talk next about uh, lowering batch or processing times and some of the ways the ZC will help do that. Uh, in essence, the, the number one way it can help is by actually doing these, these dispersions in a single pass process. So what that can lead to is number one, reduced air incorporation when you do it, but also reducing that batch time by 80 to 90%. So a couple of the ways that uh, this, this happens, single pass, as I mentioned, is the best way to make that kind of overall batch time reduction come true. Uh, it's not always possible. We understand that. So that we have ways to, to work with it when that's not the case. But what we would commonly see is you have a controlled liquid feed coming into your disperser. You have your powder loaded up here and you regulate that flow going in so that the dispersion unit can effectively create the vacuum the way we talked about a little earlier. The discharge pump shown here is optional. So this, this often relies on what your discharge conditions are going back to the tank. Uh, quite commonly, we'll see with a rheology modifier, we might actually want to have a little bit of back pressure here, but we'll talk about that again a little further on. Uh, so what happens in this case is your, your product disperses, it starts hydrating as it's going back to the tank, you get it to the tank, and then all you're doing here in the tank is just mixing to keep everything uh, blended effectively while it finishes off its hydration. And some of these types of products, they, they hydrate instantly, others do still take a little bit of time. So when you create an effective dispersion single pass, 
Uh, it still may be building viscosity for a few minutes after it reaches the tank. That said, those types of processes are the ones that if you simply add your products to the tank, they, they could take about 24 hours to fully hydrate um, through the, the gum or the thickener. Uh, and doing it in this way, I mean, really what we're talking about is creating that repeatable batch process. So you're going to do this the same time, the same every time with the same flow rate passing into the unit, your same discharge conditions. So the rate of time it takes for your powder to be drawn in is going to be consistent from batch to batch. So, so I mentioned, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so we uh, just try a quick question over here uh, <clears throat> regarding uh, the cleanability of uh, equipment. So is this system easily cleanable to meet uh, food safety requirements? Absolutely, yes. Uh, it can be cleaned in place. Uh, there, there's, it can be steamed in place as well, if that's a requirement for, for the industry at all. Uh, it is also very, very easy to disassemble. So if clean in place is not your preferred approach, uh, the actual unit disassembles within a couple of minutes. There, there's basically uh, a couple of clamps that you can see here. There's basically four clamps on the exterior of the housing. Sorry, five if you count the hopper. And then there's one rotor bolt. And it really does disassemble and reassemble very, very easily if clean out of place is the preferred method. Uh, but you'll note here the port that we see just below the powder tube, or sorry, below the powder valve, that is our clean in place port. So, but with a combination of flow passing through your uh, liquid inlet and your clean in place inlet, you can effectively clean this unit in line um, the process does vary depending on the, the, the type of product you're working with, uh, but it is very effective. Thanks. Thanks, Wayne. Okay. Okay, so, mentioned how single pass is not always an option. So, when that's not the case and we're working with a recirculation, uh, we will and can apply this in a recirculating loop. So you've got your, your liquid phase that it's added into the tank. In this case, it's, it's best to have, again, because we want to regulate the flow going into the unit. Uh, more commonly, we're going to have a pump on the discharge of the tank to actually drive the fluid through to the unit. This is going to enable the disperser to focus in on uh, creating that vacuum to draw your powder in at the rate that you want it to come in. Uh, and again, we have the option for a pump, depending on what those discharge conditions look like. Uh, more commonly, if we're dealing with a product, and this goes back to the, the very first question we talked about, what happens when you have a different liquid going through here? Uh, well, what happens is as the viscosity of that liquid climbs, the effectiveness of the disperser will decline slightly because it, it's going to act a lot like a centrif centrifugal pump would in terms of its ability to create a uh, vacuum and pump away at a faster rate than what the infeed pump is feeding it. So it's situations like this, much like the, the this system, where we would apply a little bit of a different strategy. Um, I'll talk, actually, it is in a section coming up, so I'll talk a little bit more about it there, but the system's going to look a lot like this one does. Um, so our next section is going to be on reducing air entrainment. And so we mentioned, if we go back to kind of the in-tank method, um, even if you're using a high shear mixer for in-tank, one of the things you actually need to do is get that material down to the high shear zone. And more often than not, that's going to be applied with a separate mixer that vortexes. And whenever you create a vortex to actually drive material down, um, you're going to be constantly pulling in air as well. And when we deal with the inline powder disperser, we're, while we are creating a vacuum, we're applying that vacuum directly to pulling in the powder. And so the amount of air that you draw in is directly tied to the amount of air that exists within the, the particles of the powder. And 
is effectively far reduced over um, any other type of in-tank method. And we've done some testing to actually help show that as well. Now, this, this particular um, system, that, that was one of the original reasons why this was designed. Now, this it was for a coating solution, dispersing gums and, and pigments into solution. Um, it had a very lengthy process that was uh, dealing with some dusty powders. But one of the biggest things with a coating solution is that you cannot have air bubbles in it. And so we needed to come up with a way to actually eliminate and reduce the, the amount of air that was existing in a, in a product. And by controlling the feed of the powder in and control feeding the liquid in, we no longer needed to rely on vacuum. And so this type of setup allows us a way to bring those two phases together without adding in additional air. You can essentially have it set in a fashion with that back pressure that you're only pumping away the combi combined volume or very, very close to the combined total volume of the liquid in the powder. So no additional air. We did some testing with this uh, many years ago in the lab, and we actually did a comparison between an in-tank method, just surface adding the powders into a vortex. Uh, we also then compared to the kind of conventional ZC setup, and then we compared to the inline setup such as this with the controlled concentrations. And, and what we found, the in-tank method, we were adding about um, and we did this, these measurements on the basis of density. We were adding about 10 to 15 percent air with a conventional uh, surface addition method. When we switched to the standard ZC, we were able to reduce that to about 5 percent air. When we did this method here where we were controlling the concentration, controlling the, the, the feed rates of the two phases, we brought that down to about 1 percent. So a significant increase and and what that meant is usable product instantly for this particular process because it no longer had that air uh, so working with high viscosity this is where we want to talk a little bit about that uh, that application or that initial question from early on in the presentation but uh, many of you know many of your products are you know ultimately they will reach high viscosity some of them start with you know liquids that have high viscosity already you know there's there's a wide variety of products we see here um, everything from uh, different hair care products to dental care products and and, and skin care for sure um, so we mentioned the the layout that we were talking about in terms of that recirculating uh, operation and when we start dealing with high viscosity the way we're going to uh, um, make this type of system work uh, you, you ultimately you're going to need a positive displacement pump instead of a centrifugal pump, not only on the infeed, but now also on the discharge side, because the the ZC as the viscosity of your product climbs isn't going to be able to effectively pump. And if we want to shear the powder into the liquid still, we need that fluid to be moving. And the best way to accomplish that is with those two displacement pumps surrounding the unit such as such that you can create a differential to actually still draw the powder in now the disperser will then do the job of shearing the product in to actually effectively disperse as long as we keep the liquid phases moving through the unit so that's the most effective way excuse me that we can deal with those uh, high viscosity liquid phases we talked about the question talked about um, yeah, this gives us another look quickly at, at what happens in those cases. It, it's a, an example here for a fume silica addition. Silica, as you, many of you might often know, is used as a filler to actually create that higher viscosity. Things like toothpaste in the past have often used fume silica or, or a similar type material, not only because it's a, a, a viscosity builder, but also because it's an abrasive, which is going to help clean. Uh, and so when we're dealing with those products, you know, we, we've dealt with having those two dis positive displacement pumps surrounding the unit. Oftentimes, it's best to have that discharge pump as close to the discharge of the unit as possible, and that's going to help us continue to disperse those powders into solution 
um, you know, upwards of, of a couple hundred thousand CP, I've seen us be effective at still drawing in the powder through the disperser with, uh, with that type of configuration. We can also pair these on a skid. So um, to know, don't be afraid to ask, but we can put the put together a system that enables you to have that uh, that those pump setups right next to the disperser and all the controls there as well. Uh, another food example, this was for a, like a granola bar coating. Uh, we were dispersing into a glucose syrup, so very, very high viscosity to begin with. Uh, and then we were only adding in additional viscosity with the thickeners. Okay, we got one last section here, I think, and that's on controlling the concentration. Uh, so there's a couple ways we can do that. And the first one, relies around the standard kind of hopper feed method here. And the way we are going to actually help you regulate in a repeatable process or a repeatable method is by applying back pressure to the discharge. I know I touched on it briefly already, but by doing that, we give your, your operators a repeatable method, a measurable method to say, okay, where's this running? So the variables we want are, what's your liquid flow rate coming in? charge pressure on the outlet and if we maintain and repeat those factors we're going to repeatedly deliver the product to the tank at a consistent concentration now this method might have some variation it's probably not uncommon to, to fluctuate within about a, a percentage even with that uh, just based on what's happening in the discharge line here but this enables us to work with those rheology modifiers that are going to build a lot of viscosity and, and also be very challenging to work with if you did let them come in as quickly as they possibly could because if we did it's not uncommon we, we can disperse gums and thickeners at you know 15 20 percent but you can't use them by the time they get to the tank they've hydrated so well that it looks like a almost like a solid sausage type material like it, it can be very very viscous and does not mix well when it gets to the tank. So we actually want to use and apply this method quite commonly when you're working with a gum or a thickener to actually slow down how quickly the powder can be drawn in by the ZC. It can almost be too effective sometimes. So we have to, we have to help it along the way to make sure you can use your product in the end. Other way we do it is through the continuous um, dispersion method. We've, we've seen a few slides on already. Uh, but what's happening in that case is you're, you're control feeding the powder, you're control feeding the liquid. So here we can get very, very accurate with the concentration. We basically tie into the, the accuracy of the controls for your liquid and your powder phases. Uh, and, and so we can often deliver a, you know, within a, a, a couple percentage points for sure, like 0.1, 0.2%. Uh, of accuracy depending on the accuracy of those two uh, two feed systems but what this does as I mentioned we're no longer relying on vacuum to pull in so we we deliver those concentrations exactly but it also means that we can deliver some very very high concentrations in a single pass uh, oftentimes uh, there's a couple samples we can refer back to of, of cases where customers have needed 50 70 percent solids in a single pass and this is the only way that I'm aware of that you can do that type of concentration in a single pass through an inline method. And so that's very, very helpful when it comes to some of these applications, because when you can go to a single pass process for that, you can eliminate batch tanks and, and save floor space and save, uh, save overall processing time as well. Um, one quick example here, uh, an SLS, which was being used as a, you know, a surfactant for the personal care industry, uh, want to say shampoos. In this case, they were looking for a 45% concentration of the powder in a single pass, and we we're able to deliver that. Now, SLS is a challenging powder. Um, still takes a little bit of time to de-aerate. You'll notice here, if you're familiar with SLS, this solution will go clear, and it, it did so in about uh, within about an hour of dispersion.
Okay. And now these systems, again, they, they can also be paired into um, full, fully integrated systems as well to give you a way to you know, deliver the uh, concentration that you need downstream. And I believe, yeah, that is about it. Now, I, I want to reiterate too, I mean, we're touching each of these subjects at a pretty high level. So if, if you find that you've got any um, applications that might fit the mold where you're dealing with any of these types of problems, please do reach out to, to Bechtochem and Delgit and uh, see how we can help you more. Because I, I, I would say that, um, you know, we're just scraping the surface of the ways that the ZC can be of help to you in, in each of these applications. Again, I, I thank you for the time. And if you if there are any additional questions, please feel free to ask them now. Yeah, thanks, Ming. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, I think there's some echo there. So there's a, a couple of questions we have. So uh, the question from Mr. Abhishek Das is about the output mixing efficiency in terms of uh, solid and liquid. So I know like a ZC can do pretty much high uh, concentration uh, in, a, in, a, in a single pass, but do we have something in terms of uh, uh, like uh, defining it in terms of the efficiency? Yeah, in terms of the efficiency of the mix, I would say, I mean, essentially as the material makes it to the disperser, it is, fully mixed. I mean, there's, there's certainly some instances. Is there? Um, there? There are some instances and challenges where, uh, you know, there might still be a, a desire to recirculate to reach a consistency. But in general, I always consider the, the material being discharged from the disperser to be uh, effectively mixed. So, uh, Abhishek, uh, does it address your query? Otherwise, please feel free to unmute and uh, and ask your uh, question. It's fine, sir. It's fine. Uh, I have another question. Uh, what is the sharing clearance of uh, rotor? Um, so the, yeah, there there is a gap between the rotor and stator um, off the top of my head. I believe it's about uh, twenty five thousandths of an inch. Okay. How much in terms of millimeters? So it's uh, millimeters. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, I know. Um, I know it would probably follow more metric. Mm, we we can certainly. Points. Yeah. And so anyway, I'm we'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, there's uh, another question uh, when we have uh, in terms of uh, viscosity. So what is the viscosity it is designed for? Yeah, um, I mean, like I said, at a couple points through here, th there's not a specific limitation other than, you know, as long as we can effectively pump the materials through the unit. You, you can find a way to disperse into the product. If you want the unit to be at its optimal efficiency, then you know the optimal is, is water-like viscosity passing through. That's where on its own, it can create the most vacuum to draw in the powder at the quickest possible rates. Um, you know, rheology modifiers though, we, we often don't wanna pull in as fast as you possibly can. Um, but ultimately, if you have a pumpable fluid, we can still work with it. Okay. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, any other questions from our uh, guest? Uh, please feel free to uh, submit it in the chat window or uh, just unmute yourself and ask.
Okay, so no problem. You can also get back to us uh, later for any of your uh, technical queries. So thanks, Vin, for the great uh, insight on uh, mixing of uh, tough powder and uh, how let's say this question technology can help in uh, quick and efficient mixing, eliminating waste and uh, improving productivity. And uh, demo unit is also available with Vectorchem to conduct product trial. So please uh, contact Vectorchem team if you are interested in a ZC powder dispersion trial. So uh, with this, uh, uh, we are uh, just at the end of our webinar. So thank you all for joining us today and uh, trust you find this session informative and uh, time well invested. Uh, we will send you a short feedback survey immediately uh, after this uh, webinar. Uh, it will not take more than two minutes to complete the survey. So kindly provide your uh, valuable feedback. Uh, it will help us to improve. So with this, uh, we conclude our uh, today webinar. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, joining us and uh, really appreciate your participation. So take care and stay safe. Thanks. Thank you, Aram. Thank you.